Welcome. In earlier lectures, we have uh, learnt about the analysis and some problems on the uh, multi component distillation using shortcut methods, and we have done one set of problems on that. Now, in this particular lecture, we shall be doing some other set of problems on this multi component distillation and the shortcut methods for their analysis. So, this is a tutorial on the multi component distillation part 2. So, in this we shall be learning about the application of Fenske equation to find out the minimum number of stages and the Underwood equation to find out the reflux ratio, minimum reflux ratio and the Gilland equation to find out the number of the ideal stages. So, here we have the first problem. In this problem, we are given a feed which is saturated liquid that is the feed is at its boiling uh, bubble bubble point and this feed has uh, these components one is the component benzene and it is labeled as 1 and it is 35 mole percent and it has a boiling point of 80 degree centigrade then we have tolvin it is labeled with 2 it has a boiling point of 110.6 degree centigrade and the mole fraction is 35 and then mole uh, sorry mole percent is 35 and we have the ethyl benzene that is the component 3 with a boiling point of 136 degree centigrade and the uh, mole percent is 30. And this have to be fractionated and we have to recover 97 percent of the benzene at the top because among these three components benzene has the lowest boiling point that is it will be has the highest volatility. So, it will be preferentially going with the distillate. On the other hand, ethyl benzene has the maximum boiling points among all the components here. So, it will tend to go more to the bottoms. So, here we have the benzene is recovery has to be 97 percent and the tolvin recovery in the bottom will has to be 95 percent. So, because this problem has been stated and uh, the separation has been stated with respect to benzene and tolvin. So, these two components will be taken as the heavy key and the light key. So, here we have the total pressure of the system is taken to be atmospheric and the reflux is returned to the tower at its bubble point. That means, the we are getting the in the condenser we are making simply the bubble point liquid. Now, here we have the determine the minimum number of trays uh, by the Fenske equation and then we have to calculate the fraction of the ethyl benzene removed in the bottom product. Now, please understand this ethyl benzene is the H n k that is the heavier non key component and we have to find out the minimum reflux ratio by the Underwood equation and the average volatilities, relative volatilities with respect to tolvin component 2 are given here. As you can see it is alpha 1 2 is 2.4 and alpha 3 2 is 0.48. So, it shows that alpha 1 2 means that uh, component 1 that is benzene is more volatile than component 2 that is tolvin and here we find that ethyl benzene component 3 is less volatile than the component 2. And if you take a reciprocal of this particular alpha 1 2 that is you get alpha 2 1 and you will find that alpha 2 1 is also coming nearly 2.4 it is coming as 0 0.41 or so. So, because this alpha 2 1 and alpha 3 2 are almost uh, nearby. So, it can be also justified from these values of the boiling point you can see the difference in the boiling points between benzene tolvin and ethyl benzene tolvin are almost of the same order. So, we expect that their relative volatilities will also be of the same order. Now, here are the data which are given to us about the recovery and the relative volatilities and the first part we have to use the Fenske equation and we apply it to the pair 1 2 and once we put this Fenske equation in terms of the recovery. Now, we plug in the various values of from this data and we find out that the this is the minimum 
number of ideal stages that is 7.33. And once we have done that, now we what we do? We put the again take the, the same Fensk equation, but now we apply this equation to this pair of 1 and 3, because we have been asked to find out that what is the amount of the ethyl benzene recovery in the bottom product. So, we put again in terms of 1, 1 and 3, we write this equation. Now, in this case, we find that we need the value of alpha 1, 3, which is not given directly in the problem. So, what we do? We can easily find it out from the other values that alpha 1, 3, you can uh, do it yourself that alpha 1 is equal to k 1 by k 3 and k 1 by k 3, what we do? We divide and multiply by k 2. That means, what we do? We, we do k 1 by k 2 into k 2 by k 3. Now, k 1 by k 2 is nothing but alpha 1, 2 and k 2 by k 3 is nothing but the reciprocal of alpha 3, 2. So, that is how we are able to get the value of alpha 1, 3 as 5. So, this 5 shows, this shows that there is a much larger difference between the boiling points of the component 1 and component 3. So, we put get this value of the alpha 1, 3 in this, put it in this equation and we plug in the various values and from this by solve, we can solve for F 3 W that is the recovery of component 3 that is ethyl benzene in the bottom product and that is coming out to be 0 0.99976. It is almost very, very near to 1 and this clearly shows that the ethyl benzene being uh, the heaviest of all the components in this particular mixture tends to go more with the bottoms and not with the top. That is why we are getting almost complete recovery of ethyl benzene in the bottom product. So, this is how we interpret the results obtained in this particular problem. Next, we have been asked to determine the minimum reflux ratio and for this we are using the underwood equation and this is the underwood equation we learnt earlier. So, in this equation we have the q value and q value as we learnt earlier has to be found out from the condition of the feed and we have been told in the problem that the feed is a saturated liquid. So, we go to this definition of q that is H v minus H f by H v minus H l and this here we instead of this H f we are putting the H l value. So, we find this q is coming out to be unity. Now, we put the value of q over here in this equation and then plug in the values of the various the relative volatilities. We first expand this summation for all the components and then plug in the values of all these, these uh, compositions and alpha and we find that here we have an equation in terms of only phi and we see that this equation will result in a quadratic equation that is a polynomial equation with degree 2. So, that means we shall be having two roots of this particular equation and these two roots can be easily found out as these two. So, now we find that we have two positive values of phi and phi has to be positive. So, now the question comes how to choose the value of phi for further calculation. Now, in this case we make this kind of things that without going into the detail of the theories, it is sufficient to know that when we find that we have one or more components do not distribute themselves between the top and bottom. That means, one or two components, some components will stay exclusively with only in the top product or the bottom product, but not both. So, in this case, if we have this, then we will choose that phi which will be lying between this alpha of L k H k and 1. In this case, alpha H k is that is 1 2 is 2.4. So, and this one. So, what we do that uh, this because we see that the component 3 does not go to distillate. Okay. So, we have this particular situation and in this case we choose this and we find that this particular value is satisfying this condition. So, we choose this value of the phi, the other value of phi does not put uh, give the um, satisfy this condition. Now, once we have decided the value of the phi, we go back to the 
you know, these our basic definitions of the recovery and from that we find that we plug in this we get the value of the amount of the component 1 which is going with the distill rate and we put this uh, value here and we find this is the flow rate of the component 1 in the distill rate and similarly we can find the flow rate of component 2 in distill rate and as we have said that we are saying that there is no one component 3 in the distill rate and that also we found out earlier it is giving a recovery of 0.999 something in the bottoms. Now, once we have obtained these values, we use this particular equation, this is given by for the underwood equation and again expand this uh, summation and plug in the values of these various variables in this equation and we get the, the minimum uh, volume volumetric uh, this vapor flow rate and once we know this vapor flow rate and we find the distillate flow rate like this by adding the individual amounts, individual flow rates of each of the components, we get the total distillate flow rate and we know that this is the basic definition L by D is the uh, reflux ratio and in terms of V, this is the uh, equation. So, we plug in the values of D and V min and we get the R min as the this value and this is the solution. Now, um, question comes what if somebody uses the other value of the phi. Now, if somebody uses that other value of the phi, you can also check it up yourself that if you put the other value of phi, then you will land up with some unrealistic value of these flow rates. You may get a negative value of the flow rate and that will clearly show that the choice of the phi was wrong. So, without going to into those details, it is that thing I have given you that from that I can figure out that how to choose the value of the phi and we are getting the value of the minimum reflux ratio. Now, we come to a second problem. In this problem, we have been given a feed mixture with 35 mole percent of benzene, 35 mole percent of toluene and rest is cumin and this has to be fractionated from a feed flow rate of 100 kilo, kilo mole per hour and we have to recover 98 percent of the benzene in the distillate and 98.5 percent of toluene in the bottom product. Now, because when benzene and toluene have been given and know that benzene is lighter than toluene and so it has a boiling point which is lower than the toluene. So, and because the separation have been defined in terms of these two components, so we choose the benzene as a light key and toluene as the heavy key. That is how we go about and then the feed is a saturated vapor. So, now in this case the feed is saturated vapor and if we are going to use the value of Q, we know that this Q will be now 0 and the reflux is at its bubble point and we have to assume that constant molar overflow as we have done it for the McCabe theory method. If you go back to your notes, the McCabe theory method we have used in that also we are having the constant molar overflow assumption and we are also assuming the solutions to be ideal. And based on these assumptions, we have been uh, asked to find out the minimum number of equilibrium stages, the minimum reflux ratio and the number of ideal stages if the reflux ratio is 1.3 times the minimum reflux ratio. Now, uh, for these calculations, we have been given the vapor pressure equations that is the k that, that is the volatility is taken as P i sat by P. So, K i equal to P i sat by P. So, we have that is why we need the value of the vapor pressure and these are the various equations for benzene, toluene and cumin. Now, in this you have to just um, to mention it that the uh, vapor pressure is in terms of millimeter mercury and the temperature has to be in Kelvin. So, here are the various data available to us. So, what we first do that we first label these various components benzene as A, toluene as B and cumin as C and assuming that there is no cumin going into distillate. So, we are taking the mole fraction of cumin in the distillate as 0. This is the feed flow rate and these are the other compositions and Q is equal to 0 as I just told you because the feed is a saturated vapor. So, here we cho choose the light key and the heavy key 
and this cumin will now be treated as the heavy non key. After doing so, now we go to this thing that we, we have been given 98 percent recovery of benzene. So, we use this formula to get the value of the benzene in the distillate and then from this given data 98.5 percent toluene recovery in the bottom. So, we get the amount of toluene in the bottoms and here we get uh, the amount of the component A that is benzene in the bottoms from the uh, material mass balance of A for the overall column. So, this is the amount of the benzene in the bottom product and from that again we find out that how much of the toluene is going into the distillate and these are all we are using the mass balances in these two cases and because we have been given that x c d equal to 0. So, we are making this finding the distillate flow rate by adding the individual flow rates of the each components and here we have the distillate flow rate and once we know distillate flow rate and here we get the x a d value that is the mole fraction of benzene in the distillate by this d x a d by d and this is the uh, mole fraction we get and now we can also find out the bottom flow rate by the overall mass balance for the whole column from that is f minus d. So, this is the um, uh, ma bottom mass flow rate in kilo mole per hour. So, this will be some hour kilo mole per hour. Now, at the bottom of the tower we have this value of x a w and this is also we have found out x w a x a w here and w we have found out here by using these two values we get the amount of the benzene in the bottoms and we can see clearly from this that only about 1 percent 1 mole fraction of uh, benzene is obtained in the bottom product. Now, for the rest of the calculations what we do first we take the upper section the rectifying section of the column and for that we take the we know that the condenser will be giving us the minimum temperature and we assume that initial sorry in this case we are first doing the for the bottom part the stripping part. So, we initially we do the initial bottom temperature T and based on that temperature we have to calculate the vapor pressure at that temperature and we are using this, equa this equation and uh, this particular equation we shall be using to find out the value of the k and we have to check that whether our solution is uh, right or not. So, we have to do this kind of checkings and if true we have to stop and if false we have to again update the value of t and we have to repeat these calculations. So, this is now we are going for the top also top section here also we will be assuming some temperature and then we shall be finding vapor flow rate and we find the value and the vapor pressure uh, and the at the temperature and this is the way we are finding the value of k and once we find the value of k we shall be plugging in this particular thing and to check that whether it is um, within some kind of um, convergence or not and then what we shall do that if they are true it is stop otherwise we have to keep updating the value. And so, we find this we can easily find out that uh, um, uh, that what is the top temperature and bottom temperature. So, this is the first uh, guess we have taken and uh, here what we do that we write out write all the vapor pressures for each of the components from this. And so, this 80.5 and 120, 124 that is based on uh, using the low key and the high key heavy key component we find out this temperatures from the respective um, respective um, vapor pressure equations and this is how we get these values and we get this all the vapor pressure values and we find the alpha a b as k 1 by k 2 and alpha c b k c by k b. So, after getting all these values of the alpha a b and alpha c b at the top and the bottom what we do that we find out this um, minimum reflux from this equation alpha a b average we take that means, we take the average of the top and bottom alpha rise in this way we have taken the geometric average at the two ends of the column. We plug in the values we get the average value of the alpha a b and then take the value over here and we put the value of this uh, f a d over here and the f f b w over there and we get ultimately the minimum number of stages as 9.2. Now, once we get these values 
what we do? We go to find out the minimum reflux ratio. So, we write the Q is coming to be 0. So, we find that the uh, amount of this the change in this thing is also coming at the this, this is the amount of the change in the um, uh, vapor flow rate and that is coming out to be this f by f that we, we can find out later. And we know that this is the equation uh, we uh, that 1 minus q that equation the under equation this we are writing under equation and we plugging in the values of these various components over here. And again we find out the phi is coming out to be 1.44. And once you get the value of the phi, we uh, also can find out this um, uh, value of the v min from the phi value by plugging in this particular equation and we get the value of the v min here. And then we take the um, uh, mass balance ar around this uh, um, rectifying section and we get the value of the l min. And then once we get the l min, we can find out the minimum reflux ratio as l min by d and this is coming out to be 1.43. So, this is we how we have applied the unroot equation to find out the minimum reflux ratio. And then we have, we have been given that the actual reflux ratio is 1.3 times the minimum. So, here we find out in the, in the lecture you will find that we have defined some kind of uh, variable x under bar and we find the value of this x under bar and we know the value of the n min from the Fenske equation and we, uh, we find the value of the y under bar from the x under bar and we get the value of the y under bar over here. So, with this x under bar and y under bar, we go to the definition of the y under bar uh, and we find that this y under bar, uh, we put the value of y under bar over here this and then this we put the value of the n min and we find out the actual number of the ideal stages required for the actual reflux. So, this is how we are using the Gill and correlation. Uh, let me also mention here that you can also use the graph which is given in the lecture to find out this n value. Next to find out the feed location with this we use this equation given in the lecture and in this equation now things become very simple. We, you see that we have all the values with us in the equation. We keep plugging in the various values and then we find out this is the n r by n s that is the number of the ideal stages in the rectifying section to the number of the ideal stages in the stripping section. Now, also we know that n r and n s will be equal to 19.6. So, that is what we do that uh, this is the total number of the uh, this n this this will be equal to 19.6. So, we put this we have two equations and two unknowns and from this we are getting the value of the number of stages in the rectifying section and once we get this that means, we can say the feed is introduced from 9.85 stages from the top. So, that is how we are able to locate the feed point in the you know, distillation column using the shortcut methods of uh, Fenske, Underwood and Gilliland. The more details can be found out in these references. Thank you.